Hey everybody, I got a brand new Meat Slinger 36 here that I'm going to fire up for the first time. The customer's uh, going to be picking this up on Monday of next week and uh, I asked him if I could fire this thing up and do a little quick video with it and he had no problems with that so here I am. I've got the grease pan out, I've got the heat shield off to the side, I'm charging the pellets into the fire pot which you can see they're just now starting to drop out. So you got to fill this whole auger up, auger tube up with pellets and then get them start to drop in on that heat rod down there before you can fire this thing up. Otherwise, uh, you don't have any fuel or wood or pellets in there to so ignite if you turned it on right now. So let's let a few pellets drop down there and then I'm going to kick it on. So right now I'm charging or feeding the fire pot with some pellets so that I'll have some pellets down there when I kick it on and uh, fire it up. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And you can see we've got some pellets down there now on the fire on the uh, hot rod. So I'm gonna come over here to my hopper, and I'm going to hit the feed button to turn that off. And now I'm gonna hit low smoke, and we're gonna get our fire pot to start burning here. Our heating rod should be heating up. Once I see all that going, then I'm going to put my heat shield over my fire pot and I don't need to put my grease pan in. I'll probably leave the grease pan out. I'm not cooking anything. I'm just firing this thing up. So I'm going to put the heat shield over the fire pot for sure. I'm going to leave the grease pan out. There's no point in putting that in. It's not cooking. I'm just firing it up, testing everything. time and I'll be back guys no point in sitting here watching the pellets drop on a hot rod all right guys that took uh, I don't know maybe three minutes to get to what you see now from nothing to this again low smoke and it will start putting out a lot of smoke now we got a flame started and it's gonna start burning up those pellets down there as you can see and bigger flame going that is your low smoke mode. And I'll use that to initially fire the pit up. Again, as many of y'all know, I have this meat saver in my concession catering trailer. So we've got a good fire burning. Now you notice that smoke dissipated, right? Smoke is gone. Fire is going. And I'm going to put my heat shield over that. And I'm going to close the doors, or the door. And I'm going to set this thing to 250 degrees. And just let the temp start climbing. So I'm gonna turn the phone off because I gotta use both hands to put that on that. And I'll be back. Alright, so now I've got the I did go ahead and put the grease pan in. I said I wouldn't, but I put the heat shield on. I'm like, while I'm in here, I might as well put the grease pan in. Let's just fire it up and let it run like it would normally with all everything in it, right? So Low smoke, it was running around 143 at that. And like I said, I'll just bump it up to, I hit the mid button, which is 270. I'm gonna move it down to 250. I know the LEDs don't show up on videos very well, but that's where I've got to sit at. It's 250 right now, and I'm at 152 climbing. By the way, on these meat slingers, when you get one, these old gauges, what I call these, they're not digital by no means. They're nowhere near going to get the tip as fast as that RTD that's hooked up to that hopper is going to be. So really the only temperature you need to worry about on anything is what that right there is set at and then what it is telling you that the cooking temperature is. All right, because that thermometer that, that controls this or, or sends a signal to what the temperature is in there is right here inside the cooker uh, where it's going to be the most accurate and it's being digital. Electronic is going to be the fastest. These will eventually at some point catch up, but they're gonna take a while. So if you're looking at these when you first fire pit up, when you throw 15, 18 briskets in here, don't go by these gauges, y'all. I'm telling y'all right now, don't go by those gauges. They're pretty, but you know they're not digital and they have nothing to do with the hopper or the cooking temperature. That's all electronic and that is controlled and monitoring everything that is connected to inside. We're at 170 now, I don't know if y'all can see that. 
minute and a half into it, or a minute and 50 seconds into it. And we're at 175. The stack is open. This is set up to go into a concession trailer, y'all. This guy's putting it in a food truck or concession trailer. So we have what we call an open top damper. Our open top stack with an internal damper. That way that can be sleeved with stovepipe or some other type of tubing to get it through a roof or through a backside wall. And then you can still have a damper to control and open and close it uh, on the internals. We're at 182 now. And that's uh, two and a half minutes into it. So we went from a 93 degree pit, because that's just how hot that pit was, cold, right, with nothing on. Low smoke, by the time I got the guts into it, being the grease pan and the heat shield, on low smoke, it was at 143 degrees, and then I hit it to uh, 250 degrees cooking temperature, and right now we're, we're about to hit 200 degrees. And all that's been in a matter of three minutes, about around three minutes, I think. So we've gone from 93 degrees and we're about to hit 200 right now, cooking temp. And notice those gauges, they're only reading 150. They moved up, but they're not moving up near as fast as that is. Again, that RTD inside is what's important, more so than those door gauges. Just hit 200. 200 degrees. And we are, I can't see because the sun's on my, my phone. Let me show you. Four minutes at 200 degrees. All right, I'm gonna set it off and wait till it gets to 250. So, let's see what we got. My guess is in about 10 minutes, it'll be at 250 if not quicker. We're already at 205, going on 210. Yeah, so it's not going to be, it will be, be like five minutes. We'll probably be at 250. I'll be back in a minute, guys. No point in watching, a, watching that going up uh, 42 degrees. I'm at, yeah, I'm at 210. Uh, see ya. Well, I called it. It was 150 when I shut the last video off. And now it's 156 and we're at 245. I said give it about five more minutes and it'll be at that 250 mark. And well, here we go. Uh, it's 246. It's going to fluctuate at that 250 mark, plus or minus a few degrees. Uh, and you got smoke coming out the. I don't know if y'all can see it. There is some smoke, a light hint of smoke coming out the stack. You notice the gauges are going back up, steady climbing. But again, they're way behind what the actual internal cooking temperature is in there. Again, that RTD that's inside is what this hopper goes by, not those door gauges. So don't let that fool y'all when y'all cooking these things. All right, and those things can fluctuate when you put cold meat in there, all right? 245, we're right there at that 250 mark, guys, and it's gonna, it's gonna hover around that right there. 245, 255, overall keeping that 250 temp. That is gator pit, man. Uh, you know, weather conditions or whatnot, could affect what I'm having today but you know here we are in the mid to upper 80s temperature wise clear skies uh, warm day obviously cooler weather it's gonna take longer a little longer to get the temp but this gives you an idea of just how easy that is again if you have one of my meat slingers do what I'm doing in this video guys I've been cooking on these I've got one sitting up there in my cater rig I cater with it sitting out there a meat slinger I've had it now for three years I think in in, in here yeah, going on three years, if not right at three years. Hell, maybe a little longer. But I'm, I'm familiar with them. Uh, I, I don't have issues with them. Uh, the issues I've had have been user error. Come to find out when I start troubleshooting what's happening. I'm not saying you can't have mechanical issues. You can have mechanical issues with anything, right? These things are electronic. Power surges, motors, motor augers, fans, they're all mechanical. So I'm not saying that you can't have problems, but you do get a one year warranty through Smoke Daddy on these electronics. 
when you get your gator pit, you got a one year warranty on all that. You got your limited lifetime on the, on the cooker itself. Fire up the way I just showed you, and you'll be right where I'm, where I'm at today. That easy. Uh, let me show you the hopper. This one's the Patriot. Smoke Daddy's new Patriot, made in the USA. Right now, it's either going to be the Patriot or the original that you're going to get because it's subject to availability, man. I can only get what I can get from Smoke Daddy, and right now I'm getting the Patriots. Uh, next time I put an order in, they may say they're out of Patriots and they only have the originals. So you're either going to get one that's called the Patriot, where it has the powder coating top, or you're going to get the one that they call the original uh, or standard, which is their first ones that they came out with years and years and years back, which will have the stainless steel lid. So you're going to get one of the two when you get a cooker from me. And that's your inside. There's your pellet dump in the back. These can be a left or right mount. We need to know what side you want it mounted on based on your application. We can, we can flip flop them. We can flip that over there. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to do that. It is going to cost you a little extra for that extra labor because we have to pull the controllers out, disconnect all the wiring, move it to this side, and then reinstall, reconnect the, the control panel of the PID and all the wiring. It takes about an hour, hour and a half to do that. So we charge about an hour, hour and a half for the labor to do that. But if you get it, it comes out the butt when we order them, it comes just like this. So all we do is mount that to the to the cooker. There's no extra work involved other than putting four bolts to attach it right here at the wall. It does have your probe port for your meat thermometers. And you go right there and this does come with a meat thermometer. Here I'll show you. You're gonna get this package right here from Smoke Daddy. Warranty and owner's manual. There's a meat thermometer right there. That's gonna plug in down here. Run it through there and stick it in your meat. And if you want to, instead of opening up the door and checking your meat, you get an external probe and it'll tell you what that meat temperature is. Get an external probe again, it's going to go back to your set cooking temperature. This place. Uh, Smoke Daddy recommends that these run off of a 20 amp with a 20 amp GFI outlet and a heavy duty extension cord if you're going to be hooking an extension cord on it. So the thinner and the longer a cord is, the less power you're going to be getting to your hopper. Greater chances of causing some issues. And it won't be the, won't be the cooker, it's going to be your power source to it. So read the owner's manual when you get this. It tells you exactly what it is, what it requires. And these can be converted to uh, European uh, uh, power. Uh, if you don't have the standard USA, 110, 15 amp, 20 amp, they, they can be converted. Smoke, but you have to get that through Smoke Daddy, not through us. For 250 guys, it's 251 right there. I know you can't see it, but it does display 251. And again, those gauges are slowly catching up. And it will eventually get caught up, but they don't really matter a whole lot. It's that right there, that, that's the brain, man. That is the brain, that's the computer. That's all I got to show you guys. I guess I could open it up. Let you look at it. Let's do that. You can see that sucker's hot, and that's look how that discolored, and that's with the heat shield uh, below it, and that's bluing already, man. This thing gets hot. Get a pit meat slinger, commercial cooker, great for food trucks. I'm gonna let it run. So I get ready to go home today. I'm Rich Robin. See ya.